Welcome to the Impact Business Show. I'm your host, Annalise Warren, a marketing agency CEO, business strategist, digital marketing mentor, wife, and mama of four little ones. Stay tuned for conversations with successful purpose-driven business leaders, as well as practical marketing strategies that you can action right away. We are here to help you master your marketing, build your business, and change the world. So let's get into it. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back. How are we? Now, this week, we are talking all about content because lately, the biggest questions I get are around content creating and how to do this efficiently. So today, I'm going to take you on a journey of how I create content for myself and how you can too. Now, My content creating journey has evolved. Now I can be on multiple platforms every day. And most of you know, I have four little ones from three months old to eight years old. So if I can do this, yes, you can do it too. But note that I do have a a team to support me. So you can work up to this. You do not have to be everywhere all the time, but I am going to explain how how I do this and how it doesn't take up all my time, but I can look like I'm everywhere. That is something that um that people I know tell me all the time is that you know they think that I'm I'm working so hard because they see me all the time and it's just the magic behind the content creating facade. So let's dive into how we do it. But remember you do not have to be everywhere. You can just be in the important ones that you want to be in. All right. Now this is going to be a bonza big episode. So you are going to need a notebook or you may need to listen in a few times. So settle in, get comfy and here we go. Now, number one, step number one is you need to decide on your buyer journey. Now, for those of you who followed me for a little while, you will know that I talk about the buyer journey all the time. And The buyer journey is the process that people go through from having no idea who you are to being raving fans who are referring every single person they know to your business. And that is a process. It is a journey where they become aware of you and then they move a little bit closer. They think about what you have to offer. They buy it. They love it. They refer people. And that is a journey. And that is what our marketing can guide them through in a way that is intentional. And you may have heard this be referred to as a funnel. So we have the top of funnel, which is the awareness phase, which is when people are becoming aware of you, mostly on social media, sometimes Google ads, Google SEO, that kind of thing, depending on your business. From top of funnel, we move to middle of funnel. So we're coming narrower. It's less people. These are the people that are moving closer, that are saying yes, that they are interested in what you have to offer. They These are warming up a little bit. They're becoming part of your ecosystem they're coming a little bit closer in and saying that they want to experience what you are what you are offering they want to learn from you they want to be around you so that's the middle of funnel this is where we are nurturing people with our content and then we come to the bottom of the funnel which is narrower again and these are the people that want to take action this is where people are buying this is where we are selling and this is going to be again a little closer so on each area of the funnel we are going to be using different platforms so usually top of funnel is going to be that social media google this is where people are becoming aware of us this may also be collaborations middle of funnel is going to probably be our social media maybe our email list maybe they're visiting our website and then bottom of funnel is going to be probably website email list consultation where are they buying from you so think about the different platforms now we need to decide on what that buy journey is going to be for us and there are 
different formats for different industries, but one that works really well pretty much across the board is that there is free content, no um, with behind, no barrier, no email required to get it, free content top of funnel. So this might be a podcast or your blog, um, things like that. That's top of funnel. And then we are going to potentially be moving to middle of funnel where we have something behind the gateway. And this might be a checklist or a PDF or a video series or a workshop or a Facebook group where they have to hand over their email address. The middle of funnel, when they take that step closer and they say, yes, I want to be in your, in your ecosystem, I want to, want to hear from you, I want to be around you, this is where you will be getting some form of contact detail. Now, again, it doesn't have to work this way, but this is the format that I find works really well across a really broad range of industries. So top of funnel, totally free content, um, social media, blogs, podcasts kind of thing. Middle of funnel is where you get some contact details and bottom of funnel is where you are inviting them to a sales conversation or you are sending them your offer to, to purchase. Um, it might be a webinar, something like that is going to be the bottom of funnel. So decide what your buyer journey is going to be. Once you have mapped that out and just pick one, you don't need multiple, just pick one method that you're going to concentrate on and nail before you try and diversify too much. From there, you are going to decide, number two, where are you going to post? Now, not only where are you going to post, but when are you going to post? So a format that works really, really well is having one juicy piece of content, one larger piece of content once a week, for example, like this podcast, and then breaking that up and utilizing the themes in that piece of content over that next week. So you might do a live on that then, and then you might do a little a two minute video snippet <laughs> and you might do a quote card, um, you, you might do a blog post, you might transcribe the podcast. So then for the rest of the week, your content is going to be pulled from that main piece of content that you produced and you put out um, at the start of the week. Now, that cadence of weekly is ideal because that is how you are going to appear omnipresent. That's how you're going to appear everywhere. But if that's not realistic for you right now, do every two weeks or every three weeks or once a month. Do what works for you now and you can then move up to where you would prefer to be as time goes on. So decide when and where you are going to post. And think about the types of posts that you are going to do. So you're going to be educating them on a topic. And you are going to be potentially educating them on your way of doing things and you want to inspire them. So you want to talk about them about your industry, about helping them move towards their goals. You want to talk about the why you do things the way that you do them and you want to inspire them that the reality that you're telling them that they that can be theirs can actually be theirs. So you want to think about those types of content and when and where you're going to put them. So maybe you're going to you're going to nail Instagram and Instagram's going to be your plat platform. Maybe it's Facebook, maybe it's LinkedIn, maybe it's YouTube, maybe it's a combination of a couple of them. I wouldn't recommend focusing on more than two that you really want to really dominate. You want to not spread yourself too thin, especially when you're getting started with this. All right, so from there, you are going to decide what type of long form content you want to produce. So that um, you've decided when and where you're going to post. And now what is that long form content? Is it a blog? Is it a YouTube? What is it? Where is it going to be? From there, you are going to write out your content pillars. So we're up to number four. Number one, decide your buyer journey. Number two, decide when and where you're going to post. Number three, decide what type of long form content you want to produce long term. So if you are awesome at blogging, blog. If you're awesome at speaking, do a podcast or a video. Do what you um, 
do what comes naturally to you so that you are do it and you don't hate the process. But with the caveat that you want to make sure that it's the format that your clients, your ideal clients want to consume. So, for example, this podcast is video, but it's also audio because I know that my audience are busy. They're busy entrepreneurs, lots of mothers, lots of um, people with, with young kids, with young businesses that are, you know, every day, every minute of the day is chock-a-block full. and so. People like that are people like me and I don't have the time in day-to-day life to be sitting down watching videos. So although it is video, I know that the audio is more practical and so that is why this is both um, a video show and um, a podcast because it makes it more consumable for the people that I want to reach. So think about what that is for you. Now, from there, the next step is writing out our content pillars. So what are the things that you want to talk about? Now, you should pick probably three at least and no more than seven. So for me, the things that I talk about are, of course, marketing, um, uh, general business things, what it's really like to be an entrepreneur. I speak about impact, about sustainable um, a sustainable business, about socially conscious business, about fulfilling your purpose and serving people. And I talk about the fact that I am a mom. So they are the four things generally that I speak about. So what are those things for you? You do not have to get personal if you don't want to get personal. Um, You don't have to show people what you have for breakfast. You don't have to show your kids on on social media. Choose what's right for you and your brand and where you want to go, where you envisage yourself in five, 10 years in your business. What does that look like? What do you want to be sharing then? And what are you going to be sharing now? So I feel like the content pillars, which is just like your buckets, it's just topics that you are going to be known for. Next step is you're going to, under each one of those pillars, you are going to write a list of questions. And those questions are going to form your actual content topics for your long form content. So for example, under marketing, um, I might write questions like, how can I get leads for free? How can I do Facebook ads that actually get results? Um, What is email marketing and do I need to do it? questions and then I can create an entire podcast episode or a video a a week's worth of content around one of those questions so once you've got your pillars remember three to seven under each you're going to write as many questions as you can possibly think of under each one and then if you only have 10 questions which you're going to have many more than that because you're an expert in these things you love talking about them or you wouldn't want to have them um as your content pillars, then even if you only had 10, that's, and I've got four pillars, that's 40 topics, that's nearly a year's worth of content to talk about. So there is no excuse after doing this process to say that there, um, that you can't, you can't think about what to say, because By mapping out in this way, we make it really easy, really tangible, really practical. And we're going to do this in one go. We're going to batch it so that we aren't coming back to this every week going, oh, what am I going to talk about? You're going to do this all in one go. And you're going to know then that it takes the pressure off. It means it can be fun because marketing should be fun. Running your business should be fun. And because, again, you've chosen those things that you love, that you're excited about, then talking about them, teaching people about them, serving people in that way gets to be really enjoyable because the pressure is off to have to come up with something every week. You've got your plan there and then all you need to do is outline what you're going to talk about under each one. And again, because you're an expert in those things, it doesn't have to be this really hardcore process. And because you're an expert and the people that you are speaking to are likely not at the same level of expertise as you, you don't have to be at the cutting edge, mind-blowingly amazing you know, really super technical information on each one, you can speak to your people and meet them where they're at because if you don't, it's not going to hit home anyway. So remember, um, 
if you're expert level 10 and your your audience are probably going to be back down around expert level maybe two at best and this is a concept I learned from um from Kate Ladon who is a branding um and LinkedIn expert she uses that terminology and it's so true that we're up here and our clients are not going to have that level of expertise and we need to be speaking to them and providing content back down at level two. So again, it really helps make, takes the pressure off. It helps make this process so much easier. All right. So we have step one, decided on the buyer journey. Step two, decided when and where we're posting. Step three, deciding what form of long, te- long form content we're going to produce, whether it's a video, blog, podcast. We're going to write out our content pillars. That is number four. We are going to call, write questions for each pillar that, and that is are going to form our topics. That is number five. Number six is we are going to create time then um, each month or each week or whatever works for you is to get one of those questions or get four of the questions for the month and put dot points under each one and really flesh out what we're going to say under each topic. So for the question that you had, you're going to pull that up and you are going to put information dot points underneath it so that you can then create that content. You're just going to be maybe saying three to five dot points under each question so that when you're creating your content, when it comes time to actually produce the video or the podcast, you know what you need to talk about. You know what you need to cover so that your people will get what you need, you wanted to um, provide to them to do that. So you're going to do that. I do that every month is I look for the month ahead and I, I flesh out all of those topics. And then when I'm recording the podcast like this, I'm looking at my dot points. I'm, it's not scripted, obviously. And I, but I know what I need to talk about because I have those dot points ahead of me ahead of time so that when I have my two hours of recording time, I can just record, 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 and I don't have to be planning and thinking and worrying I'm going to miss something because all that hard work has been done already. So after you have created your dot points, and this is the fun part, this is when you're batching, you are going to batch write it out if you need to write it out further and you're going to record it so we batch our content planning we batch our outlines we batch our writing and you might want to combine those two or you might not write it out often I don't write out my um my content but I will write out my captions and my emails and everything at the same time normally when I'm doing my outline. So that may be one or it may be two steps, depending on you, your preferences. So we're batching content planning first, batching our outlines and our writing, one or two steps. We are going to then batch our recording um, or, or whatever that step is for you, that actual producing the content. Then we're going to be batching our editing and then we're going to be batching our scheduling and our publishing, our posting, whatever that looks like. So from, for me, from here, from after I do the content planning, I do the outlines and the writing and I do the recording and then my team handle it from there. But if it is you doing it, then you don't want to be editing bits and pieces here, editing a podcast and then the next day editing some social posts and you're going to spend your entire life in Canva and on your garage band or something like that. You don't want to be doing that. You want to be sitting down and going, okay, I've got four podcasts that are raw that I need to I need to edit and then you're going to do it all in one one at one time when you are focused when you can commit to doing it and that way you're going to be so much quicker and you're going to get a better result faster the same with scheduling don't do dribs and drabs do it have it on your calendar have all of these things on your calendar for me at the start of the year I mapped out the entire year of my content creation days when I was going to be doing strategies um, planning when I was going to be doing um, you know photo shoots for content whatever I needed to be doing it's all on the calendar in advance and I encourage you to do the same thing you don't have to do a year maybe do the month or the three months or six months but get ahead and, and plan it out so that you this doesn't have to be something that you're always 
um, running from. It doesn't have to be something that you're always trying to, trying to, you know, this mountain you're trying to get on top of because you can be a month in advance. You can be producing things now and scheduling things now that aren't going to be going out for four weeks. And imagine the freedom of that going, oh, okay, if I don't do it this week, it's fine because I already have four weeks ahead. And you just, there's so much freedom in having that structure. So I'm going to go through it all one more time. Step one, decide on the buyer journey. How are people going to become aware of you, come closer to you and buy from you? What is that for you? Where are they doing that? How are they doing that? What are you going to do? Don't have a million versions of this. Have one way that they can buy, um, you know, or, or two. So you have one or two buyer journeys, not more than that. Number two, when and where are you going to be posting? Number three, what type of long form content are you producing every week, ideally? Number four, write out the content pillars, three to seven content pillars. Number five, you're going to write out questions for each pillar and they are going to form your topics for the week. Number six, you are going to create dot points under each one of those. And remember, we are batching everything. We are batching the content planning. We are batching the outlines, batching our writing, batching our recording, batching our editing and batching our scheduling. And that, my friends, is how you can look like you are going to be everywhere and without actually having to spend your life creating content and being on social media. So if you would like our ultimate guide to content creation and scheduling, hop on over to the website, annaliseorn.com forward slash content, and you will see there, that is where you can um, get our guide, our PDF guide for free. Uh, this is going to have a whole, it's, it's a workbook that you can work through in this order to help you create the content that you want to be producing and it is all in one place you'll make sure you will have our scheduling tools there you'll be able to see everything and map it out really really easily so that is it for today's episode thank you so much for joining me have a wonderful rest of your day and i will see you next time Thank you so much for tuning in to the Impact Business Show. Two things you should know before you go. First, come and join the party. I'm live with free marketing training in the Social Marketing Method Facebook group every single week. That's where you can ask questions and get the answers you need to simplify your strategy and amplify your income. Go to AnnaliseWarn.com forward slash group to join and come and network with an incredible community of like-minded business owners. Now, second, if you have got any value from this episode, please rate, review, and subscribe and share it out on your socials. Your support helps us reach more purpose-driven entrepreneurs and increase our impact in the world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I will see you next week. Bye. Bye.